back to the show. Well, the market is under pressure, but Udayan Mukherjee is in conversation with Rhythm Desai of Morgan Stanley. So let's cut across and listen into that. Irritant which has cropped up, uh, which is this whole business of the SIT probe into P notes or originating out of uh, Cayman Islands. Uh, you'll remember a few years back when this whole P note thing happened, how much havoc it caused in the market. Uh, uh, do you have a sense of where this one, how this one might play out and whether it might unleash any kind of damage to sentiment and to foreign flows? Yeah, hi, Odin. Good to be back on your show. Um, well, it's, I think it's uh, premature for us to react to this, frankly, because uh, it's amongst the many things that the SIT has pointed out uh, in, its, uh, in its attempt to stop uh, black money flow. So, so I think it's too early. Um, I think the government has since then issued a clarification that uh, nobody should jump to any conclusions, that any action will be taken uh, after careful thought. I think the government had uh, the experience with the MAT issue uh, that, uh, that dealing with this in a, in, a, in a casual fashion can create a lot of impact on sentiment. So I think we should expect uh, from the way the government rectified uh, the problems with the MAT issue that uh, this time around they will be a lot more careful uh, before any actions are taken. But uh, overall I think it's too early for us to actually react to this. Is it a potential irritant though? I mean, would you expect worried uh, calls from clients? Uh, uh, is it something that will engage your attention as a brokerage house over the next couple of days? Uh, would you expect to hear any voices of consternation from your clients? No, I don't think so. They're not immediately. Uh, I think uh, people will like to see what details are following up. Uh, just the mention of uh, P-notes as a potential source for black money, I don't think is going to worry uh, 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 too many people, uh, especially because I think a lot of them actually have uh, credible uh, uh, flows that are coming through. So I don't think they need to worry. Those who may not have uh, credible flows may have to get worried uh, and uh, they may actually not be part of our client base. So I don't think I expect any uh, uh, major panic from uh, our client base. Mm. You've been quite bullish about the market and one of the planks of your bullishness is kind of affirmative policy action uh, from New Delhi that uh, you are expecting over the next few quarters and years. Uh, in that, the way Parliament has moved this time and the first fears that maybe a key policy thing like GST might get delayed beyond its implementation date, is that causing some worry for your investors that maybe policy action will may not be allowed to flow as smoothly as people might have begun to price in? Well, certainly, I think the logjam in the parliament is not good news uh, for those who are expecting uh, GST to get passed in this session. I think that's the large-scale large -scale expectation of the market uh, that the GST bill gets passed in this monsoon session. I think it's imperative that it gets passed for uh, the government to meet its uh, first April 2016 deadline. If it doesn't get passed in this session, that deadline will look very challenging. Uh, so to the extent that the parliament is not functioning, I think is a cause for worry. Now, as such, you know, if I take a slightly longer term view, the GST tax law change is a sweeping reform, probably one of the biggest that we've done in 20 years. So whether it happens in April or it happens in June uh, next year is not going to materially change the outlook for, uh, for India's long term story. But certainly it could damage sentiment in the short run. Uh, so I think we have to be careful about that. And if the government is not able to pull it through in this session, then uh, there could be some risk to near term share prices. The long term I don't think gets affected, even if it gets delayed by three or six months. Mm. I ask Rhythm because, you know, these government policy things have a habit given our uh, political landscape of moving in bursts. Uh, you will have a lot of action and then there will be a bunch of assembly elections and then nothing will happen and then something will happen in a burst again. I'm sure you're watching the Bihar elections and the few assembly elections which are lined up after that, which are fairly close to call. Do you think given that, Timing is important of how much the government is able to push through right now before uh, the clutch of those assembly elections and how they may turn out? So, Udin, I think there are two parts to this. Uh, the first part is what is happening on the executive front. Uh, those actions are far more material to, say, the growth rate that India will experience over the next 12 to 24 months. The second part to this is the legislative changes that, are, uh, that have to be pushed through to the parliament. Those changes are more material from a longer term perspective. 
So, so far as the executive action is not stalled, and I believe it is not, and a lot of the data that we receive suggests that, if anything, executive action actually has been progressing at strong pace. I think the market will be okay because the market will then receive good growth data points, which is what the market cares for. Uh, of course, along the way, the market will also want that some of this legislative agenda gets fixed because that may have an impact for the longer term story. And to that extent, the point that you make on the impending elections in Bihar and the other elections that will come up next year, you know, could become an impediment, uh, especially because, as you point out, Bihar is too close to call. I've not done the analysis on the Bihar elections. I think it's still uh, very early for us to actually take a call on that. But uh, given the aggregation of the opposition in Bihar, uh, it looks like it's going to be an interesting outcome, uh, and it will be a difficult one to call. Uh, because it will be a binary outcome. So, uh, so to that extent, of course, these things will come along the way. Uh, you know, I think the bottom line point that uh, we should focus on here is that we may be, and that's what my view is, in a three to five year bull market. Now, along the way, are we going to experience uh, a, a certain patches of uncertainty, certain patches of doubt? Certainly. We went through that. Uh, we went through one such rough patch in the month of uh, in the months of March, April, and May. We came out of it in the end of June. We may enter into another rough patch if uh, there is a logjam, continuing logjam in the parliament, and if uh, there are adversarial uh, uh, state election results. Uh, and I think that those will be opportunities for long-term investors to engage in the market. So I think if we use that as our operating scenario, then uh, we do, shouldn't worry about these short-term glitches that keep coming along the way. But if your question is, are we going to get them? I think certainly we will get them. We will get a lot of glitches along the way, and share prices will react to those. Fair enough. Now, let me ask you about this very point that you've raised, the glitches or the rough patches. If you think that we are about to enter one such rough patch at some point or a glitch, what is more likely to precipitate that glitch? Do you think it will be something local like this logjam in parliament, SIT probe, etc., that we've discussed so far? Or could the genesis of that be something global, given the kind of very rough data that we're hearing from China, this home sales data in the U.S.? Do you think there could be some global panic which will precipitate that? If you had to put your money on one of the two being the reason for this glitch, which one would you put it on? Well, if, uh, if I get anchored to what happened between March and May, uh, it was actually a mixed bag of both, and I think global led local factors. But let's evaluate this, uh, I think, which is a very interesting question that you've asked. I think the world is, uh, is certainly looking a lot murkier than India is. Uh, you point out to the growth <coughs> in China, uh, the possibility of a Fed rate hike, the problems in Europe. I don't think these are getting uh, solved in a hurry. So they will keep recurring and they will keep uh, incurring damage to uh, equity share prices along the way. India has done a lot to fix its macro stability risk. We have come a long way from 2013. Fiscal deficit is down, the current account deficit is down, inflation expectations are down, real rates are up. So if you look at what happened in the month of June, particularly when there was a global risk off on the back of Greece and then uh, you know, a kind of a China growth scare. India actually behaved like a low beta market. This low beta characteristic actually comes from the fact that India's macro stability is a whole lot better than its peer group, as well as a whole lot better than what it was uh, two years ago. The symptom of this macro stability improvement is that domestic flows are very strong. So we have outlined this story a few weeks ago that we think that we're in the midst or at the beginning of a super cycle in domestic liquidity uh, into equity shares in India. I think that story will play out over the next several months and quarters 